The, the challenges that we identified in the, the last time I spoke about this was that, yes, you give the eye, you give the viewer's eye a lot to look at, but in your blocking and your lighting and your camera movement, you, you like the challenge for him, and I'm curious if you feel the same way, was the, the fun of it was to how do you direct the eye when everything's in focus exactly where you want to go? It was sort of like a new challenge for a cinematographer. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, the use of deep focus, why you did it, and how did that change the way that you lit and shot? That's a very, very good question. Um, it, in achieving it, there's two ways that we did on Preacher, and one is by the stop on the lens, um, and the other one is by using split diopters mm. um, in order to keep foreground focus and background focus. And that was something that was adopted from John Grillo's uh, time on Preacher. So I wanted to keep that going as well. Um, so we use split diopters quite a bit. Um, but uh, to answer your question about how you direct their, the, the attention of the audience to a specific area because everything's in focus, um, I think it comes down to a lot of factors. It comes down to art department, production design, the lighting, all those things can affect the frame and where you're looking, you know, are you looking towards the vanishing point? Are you looking towards a justified position on left or right of the frame and, and how do you create it there? So I think there's a lot of elements that can do that and the staging of actors too, right? Someone could be big in frame and someone could be a little bit uh, further out, like in, like an old spaghetti Western. Um, so I think using those kinds of perspectives too, can help direct the eye. And sometimes it's not easy. I mean, it, it whether we achieved it well all the time or not, I can't say because I haven't gone back and watched it. <laughs> That's but, right. You uh, never watch your work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, you, I think it comes down to, too, like uh, the working with your director, you know, and like dialoguing about it, like, hey, where's, where, are you, where are you looking right now? Like, is, are you looking, what part of the frame are you, are, are you focused on? And if, is that the right spot? If it's not, then we need to change it. Hmm. So, uh, there's not like a, you know, a, a recipe for it necessarily. Um, but you also look at great paintings from great artists and that can help too. You know, like there's the reason why I try and go to the Norton Simon museum here in LA and, and stare at paintings from time to time, just to, to see how they did it. Um, and hopefully you can adopt that to, to, to your work osmosisly or somehow. Talk to me about this split diopter and what it actually does. What does it let you do? as a cinematographer? It allows you to um, keep something that's uh, in the background in focus. That's where you throw, that's where you lay your focus on the, on the lens. And then you put you, there's different layers of split diopters, three, two, and one, and they all have different powers. And so it's becomes an experiment as far as how it's going to work. Um, like your microphone, for instance, if that was further away from your phone, uh, I'm sorry, further away from your face, and you want to keep your face and the microphone in focus, you would have to kind of figure out the distance that the microphone is at and the diopter that's right for it. And so what will happen is that you end up keeping both elements in focus. So like imagine something like that, and then when it's turned this way, they're going to both be sharp. Mm. Um, so it's uh, it's all fine-tuning it. There literally is a, a diopter. So and, and unfortunately, it's actually not a split, but it is a diopter, so you get the idea. Uh, so... If I do something like this, imagine half of it's there, half of it's not. But if it's so close to the lens, you're not going to see that blurry section necessarily, or you find a place to hide it. Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, the adapters are a great tool to use in order to affect the image. And you look at some stills of just people, you know, using split diopters. I mean, in one of the scenes in Jaws, like one of the most famous scenes, they don't even shy away from the blurry edge. Like you have right, in yeah. focus, a blurred edge, and then in focus. And it, it gives you kind of this really surreal look. I mean, obviously the goal was for it to feel and look surreal, but I think what what I saw, at least uh, what, what I was getting from Preacher, is that it, you didn't really get that blurred edge so much. It, it felt just more like everything was in focus. Right, yeah. I think that generally the idea was to hide hide the edge if we could. Yeah. What are, the, what are some but, of the techniques to hide that edge? Um... Props, background, yeah. uh, finding, you know, depending on how you have that uh, that diopter, that split portion, that half portion, if it's at an angle, then it can be a little more challenging. If it's up and down, you can hide it in a door frame, 
right? Um, yeah, it, it becomes challenging. And, and but I, I, something like you said, like in Jaws, you, it's obviously you see it. So, you know, sometimes you got to let it go and, and hopefully the audience doesn't sit on it too long to think or if they do, who cares? It's it's all suspension of disbelief anyways. Yeah. If any of you guys listening uh, or watching have experience with these, I'd love to hear your thoughts because it's something I want to experiment with. It seems like a really fun tool, but there's so many situations where like, you know, I'll uh, I'll be shooting something and I'm like, uh, you'll put it in focus and you'll realize, oh my God, we just don't have the set design to fill all of these gaps. And it's just so easy to just blur it. Clients love it. Yeah. It looks beautiful. You know exactly where to look. I think there's such a temptation to isolate your talent and blur everything out. And I think it's a unique and interesting challenge to kind of let everything be in focus and see what you can get out of that. Yeah. And I think it's also comes down to aesthetics and styles, you know, in, in the, in our contemporary lives right now, like it's just, it's, it happens to be that kind of vibe. People want things out of focus more and that shallow depth of field and everyone shoots wide open and, and it seems to be a trend and, and it's a beautiful look and it, it works for a lot of stuff, but I, I'm also drawn towards the extreme depth of field. And I actually, I'm looking for, a, I'd love to do a project that is, Everything's in focus, like a noir, like, you know, think Orson Welles, like Touch of Evil or something, or, yeah. or Citizen Kane. It's just everything's in focus. I would love to do something like that. Oh, that would because be you're using different, uh, you know, you're using different tools. Like you said, like, how do you create the viewer's eye to a certain, to a certain spot without using the easy way of defocusing it? Yeah. 